Do you wish that the tuning knob on the Anytone 778 UV worked the volume control without having to press the P6 button to adjust the volume? Let me show you how to do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today, uh, I thought I would go over a couple of tips and tricks for the Anytone AT778UV. This is a 25 watt UHF VHF radio. Uh, it's a great little radio, a lot of nice features, nice display. Uh, there's lots of videos out on YouTube on how to program all the various uh, program buttons and how to work this. And I searched all over the place. I heard there is a hack to change the tuning knob to become a volume knob without always having to press the P6 button first to adjust the volume. So, I'm gonna show you how it's done. Anyways, before we hop into that real quick, I just wanted to give you, um, to show you what I had done with some of my shortcut keys. Uh, they're normally, you've got the A and the B band, uh, you've got your V and your M for uh, memory mode or frequency mode, you got your monitor button, keep in mind, that the squelch only opens up as long as you're holding P3. Uh, then on the other side, the P4 was programmed for VOX. Um, I, wanted a, I wanted my scan function to be nice and easy to get to, to hit a button without having to go through the secondary menu to do the scan. So I changed the VOX to the SCN. Uh, I left the squelch alone. And then down here, this is normally the VOL volume uh, selection. So from the factory, what you would have to do is if you want to change the volume, you've got to press the P6 button. You'll see this display change from the voltage to the volume, and then you, you change the, the knob to change your volume. Pain in the butt if you ask me. Uh, this knob is normally by default set to change your frequency. So I'll show you how that goes. Once you change uh, this knob function in either the CPS software from Anytone or in Chirp, this channel option uh, becomes available. It's normally not, you normally can't see it uh, when you go through the menu items until you've changed the functionality of the knob. So I'll show you how to do that. And then on my secondary menu, um, what I've done, these are all the same, the power, since I don't have the scan here, this RDW, this is the dual watch button. This allows you to toggle on and off. Let's go back, because it'll, there you go. If I click that, now the bottom frequency here goes off. This gets a little bit larger, and you can see only the, the main channel. You don't have to worry about channel band A or B. Uh, my only gripe is I wish that if you had it displayed like this, it would also show you the frequency, but unfortunately it does not. So um, let's go back. We'll hit function. And I'm sure you guys probably know to get to the secondary function keys, you just have to press the function button a second time. It switches over. I'm going to select this uh, dual watch and put it back again. So anyways, that's how you end up changing that. Um, the cool thing about it is, is that once you have changed the, uh, the channel knob or the, yeah, the channel knob to volume, um, you can just, you don't have to press anything. You can adjust the volume here. You'll see that it shows the volume down there. And then if you do want to change the channel, you can press that button and then you can change the channel here. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the other cool thing about it is, is once you change it and do the hack, as I call it, um, your microphone here, normally what you were able to do was, um, you can, you can, uh, change the volume. You have one of your program keys, your function keys set for the volume here, um, you can change the volume with the up and down. So when it is in the uh, volume mode where the, the knob works the volume, um, the cool thing is the up and down buttons will actually change your channel up and down by default. Okay. And then I've got these programmed here. My top one will change it to volume. So I can easily with the, with the keypad um, change it this is my channel. If I click my button here to change it to volume, I can adjust the volume actually from 
the keypad here too. Um, I've got these programmed so that I think my other one is um, the squelch and then these two uh, you press and it ends up turning on the scan, which is kind of neat. So anyways, uh, it's very cool that you could still change the volume really easy with a secondary press from the mic. Uh, you can change it with the knob here and then an easy way to change the channel. I usually don't change the channel here. I just change it on the mic. It's great that you could just change the channel up and down from here without pressing a second button and you can change the volume from here without uh, changing the channel. So anyways, uh, let me show you first this next screen that you see here is actually the CPS software that comes from, that you can download from the Anytone website. Uh, if you take a look here, you've got some functions on the left hand side. Uh, the very topmost is CH for channel. Um, you can see kind of in the background, those are my channels that I have programmed into the radio. When you click on the second one down called function setup, it brings up this additional function setup screen. And if you take a look on the right hand column, the second from the bottom, there is a knob mode that says VOL. Uh, that shows you that's the one that you end up changing. Okay. Um, it you normally by default says CH for uh, channel. Um, and that makes it just so that when you turn the knob, you change the channels by switching it over to VOL. Now you can use the knob directly to adjust the volume. When you make this change, that's what also enables you um, to see the channel uh, on the screen on, when you press uh, for the P6 button so that you could change it. So this is kind of a cool place to do it. Um, I prefer, my preferred method is the um, Chirp, the Chirp Next software. Um, I run it on a Mac. Uh, it's available for Windows too. It's just a little bit easier to use. I'll show you how to change that volume knob function there also. The other nice thing about Chirp is uh, the fact that unlike the CPS software where you have to put in the uh, receive frequency and calculate what the transmit frequency is based on your offset, the, uh, C, uh, the uh, Chirp software automatically does it. All you have to do is punch in the uh, receive frequency. So let's take a peek at that right now. Okay, so this is the Chirp Next software that's available for the Mac. Uh, I downloaded the CPS software that Anytone has out on their website. While you can uh, change the tuning knob, volume knob change on either one, I prefer Chirp. Chirp's got uh, much better options in here for some things. Like for example, these were all of the repeaters that I ended up adding. Um, I only had to put the frequency in here. I did not have to do the math to uh, you know either add or subtract the proper offset uh, to put in the frequency that the repeater is listening to. Uh, Chirp will do it automatically based on, you know, if you're putting in UHF or VHF frequencies. So, for example, here, uh, you know, the columns, you end up putting in the frequency. You can put your name. Uh, the one downside of the Anytone uh, radio is the fact that it only allows you um, six uh, characters in here, where a lot of the other radios, including handhelds, will go up to eight, sometimes more. So that's kind of a drawback. Uh, the tone mode here you put as tone, and then of course here's your uh, tone frequency that you put in to open up the repeater. Um, the offset will be calculated automatically, like I said, based on if you're uh, putting in a UHF or a VHF frequency, and then you can change uh, if it's a positive or um, a negative offset on the, um, um, on the frequency, <laughs> either up or down. Uh, these will all be mode as FM, and then uh, usually when you add your own line, the um, power here will uh, de default to low. I end up switching them to high. Uh, the one other thing I did like is if I scroll down to the bottom here, um, I do have at the very bottom my NOAA weather channels. Uh, I did add those. I also have a dispatch for a public safety frequency that's in here. The cool thing is what you can do is this duplex column. Uh, you can change it to off 
and that prevents you from transmitting on those frequencies. I don't want to transmit on the weather channel, and I definitely don't want to transmit on the uh, on the dispatch for fire and ambulance and stuff. Uh, the skip column here, uh, this is for scanning. If you uh, put an S in here, it will skip the scan. So kind of seems opposite. It stands for skip. It doesn't stand for scan. So if you see an S in here, you're skipping the scanning. Uh, the power level on a non-transmit channel really doesn't matter. I just put low in here just in case something happened and by accident, you know, I ended up transmitting, but uh, I can't because these are set to off. So that's it for the memories page. Now, uh, the big thing you want to get to is if you click on settings, here is the key one. There is a, uh, a, f a flag or a field here called knob mode. Um, I have it changed to volume. Uh, you can see normally the default would be channel. That's the way the radio comes. So this is what you want to change. And what's key here is once you write this file back to the radio, and your radio has uh, is now set for volume on that knob, there is, and I'll show you on the shortcuts, uh, there is a shortcut, uh, the, the P6 shortcut used to say VOL for vol, and you used to have to click on that to uh, you know turn the knob and change the volume. Well, there is an option now, and I think it actually automatically replaced it, uh, called CH uh, for channel. So now, um, instead of clicking the, uh, the P6 button, to change the volume, you click the P6 button to change the channel, and then that makes the knob uh, back to a channel knob temporarily, and then it will go back to being the volume knob by default. All right, so that is basically a couple of uh, helpful, hopefully helpful tips for the Anytone 778UV. Um, this is a great little radio. Uh, like I said, 25 watts. The display is really nice. It, you know, there could be a couple little things to make it a little bit better. Like I said, I wish you could uh, not only dis display the, the name, uh, but also the frequency underneath it, especially if you turn off the dual watch where you've got a little bit more real estate on the screen. Um, the other thing is, too, I wish you'd be able to display more than, uh, you know, six characters for the name. Uh, a lot of other, uh, you know, portable radios and stuff with smaller screens. Um, you can even do more, you know, sometimes up to eight characters there. So anyways, I wish any tone would fix that, but a uh, great little radio. Um, I rec, I, I highly recommend this one. Um, it's, it's a great radio for the, the price, uh, can't beat it. And it's been really, really good so far. So hopefully that helps you guys. If you guys are thinking about getting one of these and we're just kind of turned off by the lack of a dedicated volume knob, or if you have one, and you've been frustrated with not having the volume knob, here's the solution for you. So thanks again. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.